This lecture is going to cover part of the anatomy physiology chapters, specifically nutrition and digestion, gas exchange, circulatory systems, and the immune system. So let's first look at digestion. Uh, organisms, uh, like animals, need to eat, remember they're ingesters, in order to gain um, molecules for, uh, quote, energy, meaning basically you can extract electrons from them to do cellular respiration to make ATP. They also need molecules in order to actually build their molecules of their cells in their body. So in order to build enzymes, which are proteins, inside the cell they're going to need protein building blocks, like amino acids, from eating molecules. There are three main dietary categories of animals. They're the herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. I'm sure you've heard of them since you were young. Herbivores are plant-eating organisms, carnivores are meat-eating, and omnivores eat on a regular basis both plants and meat. And so here are some examples of those types of organisms. There are four main ways of ingesting one's food. So one type is suspension feeding. So this is when the, the uh, it's gonna be in water. And when the liquid is passed across a body part or through the cells of the animal and they're going to capture little particles from that water. So classic examples of filter or suspension feeders would be like the sponge and um, bivalves like clams. They sweep the food across and catch it in their gills and then send it to their mouth. So those kinds of um, passing the water over and capturing the food. Substrate feeders are animals that live in their food and eat their way through it. So this is an example here of a caterpillar eating its way through a leaf. Um, we also have things like maggots eating their way through meat uh, or um, earthworms eating their way through the dirt and getting the nutrients from the particles inside the dirt. So any of those would be substrate feeders. Fluid feeders um, subsist on nutrients they get from liquids. So here's an example of a mosquito feeding on blood. It's a female mosquito. The male mosquitoes, as well as many other insects, um, and things like hummingbirds, um, they are fluid feeders as well. They drink the nectar from flowers, which is a liquid. And the final group is bulk feeding, which is what we do, primarily. Um, and that's going to be taking in either entire organisms, like this bird eating an entire fish at once, um, or plants, entire chunks of plants. Um, or you can rip off parts of the food source and then ingest that, but it's in, in large chunks. Digestion happens in four main steps. So this is showing through a cat. Um, the first part is ingestion, so that's taking the food into the body. Then you're going to have um, the process actually of digestion, which happens in kind of two ways. One would be mechanically, so it's some sort of grinding of the food, whether it's in the mouth here or in the gizzard of many organisms, something like that, grinding it. Then we have the chemical digestion in things like um, sometimes the stomach and the intestines, and that's going to be when the enzymes are going to break down the food in processes like these where you take a large molecule like a protein and um, break those bonds in order to make smaller individual molecules. These guys can then, like the amino acids or monosaccharides, they can go be built into uh, other new molecules for the body, or they can be used in cellular respiration to generate ATP. Then we have the absorption phase, which is how you actually get these small molecules into the cells. So that's going to be transporting those across cell membranes. And then finally, elimination, which is when the di in undigested material is going to be um, released from the body, whether that's out a second opening, the anus, or it can be out the initial opening, um, like in a planaria, the food goes in and out the same opening in a gastrovascular cavity. So here are some examples of um, uh, digestion compartments. So sponges specifically digest in vacuoles inside their cells. So they filter the food through, capture the food, take it in, into their cell and that's the only place digestion happens. Things like cnidarians and flatworms have a gastrovascular cavity, that's what GV stands for, which is this gastrovascular cavity. And um, the process here, the food's going to enter the mouth or enter the opening, be digested inside this cavity. So you can see the enzymes are released, the food's digested into smaller particles which are taken into the cells. Then the food that is, um, or the particles that are not digested, that can't be broken down by the organism are released back out that opening. Most other animals have alimentary canals, which we can also call a complete digestive system. 
So this is a system like ours where we have a mouth opening, digestive tract, and then an anus opening at the other end of that tract, the tube. And as we go along the tube, there are different um, specialized regions for certain digestive steps. And that's really the advantage of having an alimentary canal instead of a gastrovascular cavity is that you can have specialization along the way. So here are some examples of alimentary canals. Um, the general process is it goes into the mouth, through the pharynx or throat, depending on the organism, and then through an esophagus. And it's going to go somewhere where um, uh, uh, some combination of these, so crop region, so like in the grasshopper or the earthworm, like we saw, um, or here's a bird. So that's going to soften the food. Then sometimes it goes through a gizzard to grind the food. And then it will um, sometimes be in a stomach, another type of grinding, an enzyme digest or enzyme um, breaking down. Then you'll have the food go into the intestine, where that's when, um, in the beginning of the intestine, you're going to have a lot of digestion. So like here would be um, the gastric pouches. They're secreting enzymes into the grasshopper gut, and that's going to be digesting. Um, the intestine is also where all the absorption happens of those particles into the cells. And then the anus is where the undigested particles exit. So here's our um, alimentary canal, our digestive system. So we have our mouth, then we have a pharynx and an esophagus. goes into the stomach. Then we go lar uh, small intestine, the absorption and breaking down of food. Large intestine, the absorption basically of water. And then the rectum to the storage of the feces and the anus to exit. There are also, you can see in blue here, some accessory organs which are helpful for um, secreting different enzymes and molecules to help break down the food. When we look at digestive systems um, of animals, you can frequently tell what kind of diet that animal has. So uh, you can look at the length of the alimentary canal. So frequently um, you'll see that longer overall um, digestive systems are going to belong to herbivores and omnivores. Takes longer to break down the plant material than um, animal material in a lot of cases. You'll also see that we have um, a long cecum. So if you see a long cecum, that's like this little pouch right between the small intestine and the large intestine. And uh, ours is a little pouch which has an appendix sticking off of it. Now that's that region of our body. Ours is relatively small. But something like a koala, an herbivore, has very large cecum, and that's where, um, in its case, there's bacteria and protists that um, live there that are going to help the koala digest its cellulose. So it can't digest the plants itself like the leaves it eats. It doesn't have those enzymes. But the bacteria and protists do. They need somewhere to live, and that's why it has a really large cecum. So the food will go in there, get digested, and it'll come back out and then go into the large intestine. Uh, other organisms that eat um, solely plants, like, like rabbits and rodents, also have a cecum. Um, I know rabbits also do this thing where they have certain, um, they're not feces, they're, they're other types of uh, excretions through the anus that are re-eaten, um, and so it's different than their, their actual poop. It's um, undigestive material that they'll eat again, and it'll go through the digestive system a second time, and then after that, it will be able to be excreted as actual feces. Um, ruminants like cattle, sheep, and deer, the ones that chew a lot, they have multiple stomachs in a lot of cases, at least the cattle do, um, and where different breakdown happens in different stomachs. Um, and you also have the cud, which is like the chew with the food, and it goes down into their body, into their digestive system, gets broken down some. It'll come back up into the mouth to be mechanically digested more, then go back down into the system, etc. So why do we have this digestion? We need to get nutrition. So let's just look at a couple of those points. So one of the things I need you to be able to generally do is to look at um, nutrition facts on um, a food item. Uh, so uh, hopefully you've all looked at something like this before, but if not, um, they'll have serving size up here, which is important. So a lot of times we eat more than one serving size and we look at the numbers perhaps, but not how much of that food we're eating um, gives us those nutrients. So we have calories, um, different breakdowns of types of fats and cholesterol, sodium, uh, and then we have different types of carbohydrates, protein, and then usually some vitamins and mineral numbers down here. 
There's also no ingredient list, and in case you're not aware, um, the ingredients are listed from the most um, common ingredient to the least common. So whatever is the first three listed things, that's what food's mostly made of those components. So one of the things with nutrition and out of balance nutrition, and one of the consequences of out of balance nutrition can be um, having too much weight. Also obviously having too little weight, which is a serious problem as well. So uh, overweight seems to be a more common thing in the general populace, and so why would that happen? Lack of exercise, um, too large of food portions, eating poor quality food that doesn't have a lot of nutrients but has a lot of salts and calories and fats and things like that, but it's not giving you the things your body's going to actually use. Some genetic contributions to that as well as probably a combination of all these. Now the flip side, people that are underweight probably have too much exercise, perhaps too little food, um, still poor quality of food in a lot of cases where you're looking at things that are not giving your body nutrients um, and also possibly genetic contributions to lead to you know, that kind of eating pattern. So you have to be careful with weight loss diets, particularly extreme ones, because most of the time they are um, undernourishing or malnourishing you, meaning you don't get the nutrients you need. It's also, um, you know, extreme diets don't usually work. They make the body go into survival mode where they hold on to um, fats and they're just generally a, not a good idea. So the best way in order to maintain a healthy weight, high, not too high and not too low, is to have moderate and reasonable amounts of exercise that's not damaging your body. Um, also eating reasonable portions. So there's plenty of stuff online about portion size. They might be a lot smaller than you think. Maybe you need to eat, you know, eight servings of protein a day, but just to realize what a serving is is important. Um, and just my... This is my interpretation. Nearly all quick fixes are BS. They don't work long term and they're really probably not very healthy. So you're looking at a lifestyle of maintaining good health instead of a loose, you know, 10 pounds a week kind of ridiculousness. One of the other things you'll see in your blood work and they, they uh, are concerned about in um, the medical world are the different types of cholesterol um, protein combinations. So these are lipoproteins. So there's, they, they talk about it being LDL cholesterol and HDL. So this LDL or low density, that's the quote bad cholesterol. So basically those particles are um, the ones that stay in the body. The cholesterol doesn't get taken out of the body and they can build up on the walls of your blood vessels. The high density lipoproteins they, um, that combination of protein and cholesterol does get processed and removed from the body. We actually also know that you have high HDL levels. That's going to actually increase, improve your health. So we do want high levels of that. They see that uh, there are certain activities that increase the HDL and, and decrease it. So, And then we can also see LDL levels can be altered as well based off of activity. So trans fats, so uh, ones you really want to avoid, <clears throat> partially hydrogenated oils. If you're eating many, mainly unsaturated fats, so things like avocados, oils, basically all, most plant fats, they're going to lower the LDL levels, which is a really good thing. So here's the general um, dietary guidelines, and this is relating in this case to cancer, but also overall health. So you're looking at healthy weight, um, choosing lots of fruits and vegetables, whole grains instead of processed grains. So you're looking at things that are kind of the way I think about it is, is this sort of what you get in nature or is this food something that's completely not close to nature at all? And generally the things you want to choose are things that are closer to what's available in nature itself. That means it's less processed. Uh, also um, reasonable amount of red meat consumption, also processed meats like your lunch meats and things like that. Um, it doesn't mean you have to cut them out completely, but it does mean that you don't want to be eating a steak every day. And then also if you're drinking alcoholic beverages, you know, limiting those to uh, one or two drinks a day or less would be, you know, the, probably the recommended amount. Uh, and a drink you know, might not realize is probably less than you might think it is. So we're only looking at five ounces of wine. When people pour themselves a glass of wine. Frequently it's like two and a half servings. So just to be cognizant of that as well.